So there's plenty of practice that you can do when you're away from the drums or away from your stool. Uh, common practice can be your posture. This is something you always want to maintain in breathing very deeply. You'll find that as you play and you create tension in your hands and you increase in tempo and you become blistering fast, you'll start to hold your breath and you'll start to concentrate. Just like when you're lifting weights, you want to coordinate your breathing with your playing. So that's something that you can grow uh, conscious of. This level of self-awareness is something that you want to practice because the majority of your time playing will not be performing and not be playing in groups. It'll be practicing. So your ability to identify the lessons and identify them with yourself will uh, heighten your uh, capabilities of progressing through the lessons. The countdown exercise, being that it's exclusively a hand exercise, can definitely be applied away from the drum set. Um, even with your own body, you could substitute your legs for the exercise as well. Or, if you'd like, you can substitute your hands against each other. This one is going to be quite exhaustive because you're using both hands at the same time. Versus here, whereas your right hand is playing, your left hand is resting and vice versa. So you'll definitely want to take these exercises much slower. But again, we're just striving for flexibility. So that's something that you can always practice. In terms of how often to practice and how many repetitions, that's really up to you. Uh, what you want to do is to listen to your body. Uh, if this is a move that's especially foreign to you, you'll have less flexibility in your wrist and it'll be a little bit more difficult for you. But for example, if you're just starting drum lessons and you've already taken perhaps piano lessons or you've done a lot of typing, you'll find that you've developed some of these muscle groups already. So what you want to do is to shoot for a rate. It could be as fast as this or as slow as this. What you're striving for is a tempo or a rate that you can perform the exercise in its entirety. So what you can do is to practice the short bursts, which is a countdown with one grouping on each hand. Eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. So just like if you are working on running, you run sprints, which those could be uh, considered the sprints because you are working on a, a higher rate because you're not playing for so long, your muscles aren't fatigued, so you can play through one repetition each. Then you also want to work on your distance running. So that is when you could work on, say, four repetitions. So you'll be going eight, 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 and then down. So what you want to do is just listen to your body. You want to pick a tempo that's comfortable where you can get through it all the way from the beginning to the end. If you start at a tempo and you get down uh, from eight to five and you're starting to lose uh, your stamina and your arms are tensioning up. Just relax, loosen them up, refer back to the exercises that we did to loosen up your muscles, slow the tempo down, tempo down and repeat again. Tune in for lesson two. We're going to be getting into uh, the relationship of the stick and the hand and how that's going to work to produce the stroke that we'll be using as a performance. But until then, keep your arms loose and keep working on that countdown exercise with your bare hands. I'll see you next time.